Good morning. Happy Tuesday. I have Neuro Coffee in hand and it is perfect. All right. Busy clinic day today. Got to dig straight into today's Q&A. Uh, this is with Andrew. Um, at the last Coffee and Coaches Conference call last Thursday, um, 6 a.m., please join us. Um, we talked a lot about quadruped positions, bear crawls, etc. Like how we can utilize these, how to coach through them. And Andrew brought up some really good points about, okay, th this is what I'm seeing as a representation of their of their output. It's like their, their technique. Then how do I coach them out of it? And then does this give me a reason to say, okay, this is not the appropriate position. So, so a lot of people make mistakes and try to work through these things when people just don't have the capacity to assume this position. It's a very useful position, um, very uh, useful to capture your internal rotations as it is a middle representation, but uh, not everybody is qualified. And so um, understanding how to coach people through this and, and especially, like I said, when they're incapable um, to recognize that and allow you to move on to a more successful activity. Uh, so thank you, Andrew, for this. If you'd like to participate in a 15-minute consultation, please go to askbillhartman at gmail.com, askbillhartman at gmail.com. Please put 15-minute consultation in the subject line so I don't delete it. Include your question in the email, if you would, please. We will arrange that at our mutual convenience. Everybody have an outstanding Tuesday, and I will see you tomorrow. If we're, if we're looking at a... A uh, quadruped position, let's say not a, a bear position per se, but just hands and knees. Yep. Um, I am torn between two different ways of doing that. Um, one where it's much more focused on creating um, the the do dorsal rostral compression, where you're kind of like getting the arms to be somewhat straight, and and that's you know pushing the sternum forwards. And, you know, some people can do that, some people can't. And then doing that exercise with a little bit more of like a relaxed disposition where everything's just sinking towards the ground. Like it kind of feels, if I'm doing that subjectively, it feels more like the, the abdomen's expanding, maybe like the, the sternum and the pubis. Um, but I'm guess, I guess I'm asking about the, the difference and sort of merits of doing a quadruped hold with like a hard push where you're, where you're not, not like a, right. It's not like a harder, relatively a push into the ground versus doing it in such a way that you're kind of just sinking into the ground. You're just propped up. Okay. Um, let's, let's reorient thought process for just a moment from quadruped. Okay. Let's just say that, so you're on the ground all fours and the ground, the direction of the ground is now forward. Instead of being down, we're gonna call it forward, okay? And if I push into the ground and, and you feel that the, the, the yield in the dorsal rostral thorax, are you still going forward? No. Strike one. Okay. <laughs> well, yeah, I guess your, your head is moving back, um, but yeah, you're pushing forwards. Hang on, hang yeah. on, hang on. Dorsal rostral thorax is concentrically oriented. Yeah. That's a compressive strategy. If I push through the ground and, I, and I, I, I'm still going forward, gravity doesn't stop. It's still there. You're still going in that direction. Okay, but you're slowing down. Okay. It's the yield. You understand? Yeah. Okay. If you give way, if you allow yourself to move in that forward direction, scapulae are going to are going to approximate, are they not? Right. Okay. So depending on how you're executing this. You might just get pure scapular retraction, which is actually which is actually an anterior posterior compression, which will elevate the scapula on the thorax. Do you notice that when you when somebody kind of collapses in, in quadruped that they kind of look shruggy? Yeah. That's because the scap is going superiorly. 
relative to the axial skeleton. Okay, right. so that's the anterior that's the anterior posterior compressive strategy. Right. Okay. And so again, th th those are the decisions that you make. It's like, what what is the intention here? What are you trying to do? Okay. Right. So if you want if you want um, the availability of of the pump handle to move, if you want yielding dorsal rostral thorax then you, you have to avoid the ability to, or you have to avoid their, their position of moving forward, downward, obviously. Yeah. You, do you see, like, I guess, just understanding what, what type of an activity that you're, you're producing, and then what right. is the intention? Right, and I suppose if somebody seems like they are pushing hard no matter what you do, it's just that's not the right activity at this time. Maybe so, because so so let's let's look at look at the two possible extremes. Sag as much as they can with arm strength, okay. Scapular elevation, AP, right? Or they push really hard and they still elevate the scapula, right? Yeah, it's like you're looking at you're still looking at AP compression because the scapula is going up on the thorax, which means you have to squeeze it front to back. Right. 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 Yeah. Got it. Okay. Very helpful clarification. Uh huh. But, but like the minute you put somebody in that position, you, you say, well, I'm going to coach you a little bit and we'll see if we can handle this position. And then if, if you can't get the response that you want, then you take them out of that position and you make it easier. Right. Okay. Makes sense. Thank you.